Welcome back. In this lesson, we are gonna talk about the preparational steps that you need to undertake in order to build an effective dashboard. We'll go through some questions you need to ask your audience, assemble all the different metrics and dimensions you want to pull from your tool and sketch out your different visualizations that you later want to implement in Google Data Studio. All and more coming up right after this. All right. In this course, we're gonna go through a three-step process in order to build our effective dashboard. First of all, we go through the preparation steps, which we will do in a second here in this lesson. In the next lesson, we're gonna talk about the data setup and get our data sources ready so we can then, in the last lesson, visualize our data in Google Data Studio. But for now, we are just gonna go through the preparational steps and these are very important. What does this actually entail? Well, before you begin implementing anything into different tools, you might want to ask yourself a few questions and this really goes into the exploration phase. What kind of dashboard are you trying to build? Talk to your target audience, look into how they are analyzing their data maybe nowadays and what your dashboard will bring to the table. Then we'll go into the definition phase where we'll actually look at all the different metrics, dimension, data, and the sources that we need to have ready in order to build our dashboard. And once we know what data we want to visualize, we can actually start sketching out or wireframing our dashboard on paper or in a wireframing software. So let's go a little bit more in depth into these steps. So first of all, in the exploration phase, you would ask questions. Now, who is this data dashboard actually for? Be very clear about your target audience and then actually talk to your target audience, what they see the dashboard actually doing for them. What's the goal of the dashboard? Why do they want this dashboard to be built? How should this dashboard make their lives easier? Now, if it's for example about data analysis, then you might want to dig deeper and find out how they are doing data analysis without the dashboard. At the moment, how can it actually save time? What data points are they looking at? What analysis are they going through? What are the different steps that they're going through in order to get to insights? Now, all of that feedback should be taken into account once you conceptualize your dashboard. So your dashboard actually fulfills its purpose for the target audience. Now, this might look like in our case, take the Facebook optimizer that actually you would ask for questions, asking what are your most important KPIs? What do you want to have on this dashboard? When you log into Facebook in the morning, what steps are you going through? Why is that frustrating? How can that be solved through a dashboard? And you might get answers just like these that actually tell you a lot about what this dashboard should accomplish for the client, for the audience, for the user. And that's also how the dashboard can be really meaningful to the user because it actually saves some time in actually using it in order to make decisions or get a quick overview in order to know where to dig deeper. So this Facebook optimizer would maybe say, I need an overview over my KPIs. I'm really going through these steps in order to optimize my campaigns. I'm looking at that data. I'm doing this analysis. And if the dashboard would help me to do this all faster, then it would be something that I would use. Now there's nothing worse than putting time into building an awesome dashboard that nobody uses. So talk to your target audience and find out what they want on this dashboard before you start implementing anything. Now, once you've gone through that phase, you need to actually get some definitions straight. From the interview, you probably elicited different metrics, different dimensions, and different sources where this data comes from. And this is something that you need to write down in order to be ready for the next part when we pull the data actually from the system and prepare it in Google Sheets. If you don't prepare that beforehand, first of all, won't get clear on your visualization, but may also find yourself going back and forth between your data extracts, the data that you want to display and the actual visualization, which can be very distracting and not very efficient. So get clear about the metrics. So for a Facebook ads dashboard, you might want to know how many clicks, how many impressions, what was the click through rate, what was the ad spend and so on. Put that all down onto a sheet of paper or into a document so you'll know what to look out for once you prepare your data in the next step. 
Now, once you have all the different data points that you want to visualize, it actually comes down to thinking about the visualization. How can I tell a story with my dashboard? And I'd recommend that you actually take time to look through other dashboards, look through other implementations of Google Data Studio dashboards. There's, for example, the Google Data Studio gallery that you can see different visualizations from. But always ask yourself, how useful is this for my dashboard? Does it actually make sense to display the data in that way? Will it help my target audience to do what they want to do with the dashboard? For example, get to insights or keep a clear overview. Don't overcrowd your dashboard. And actually, you can also look through other dashboards of other companies, of other tool vendors. There are also great examples that we will link up in the description below that you can check out and get inspired before you start actually sketching and wireframing. Now, for our example in this course, I went ahead and built a little sketch in a tool called Balsamic. You can check that out in the description below as well. We have thought about, okay, what story do I want to take my user through? What would be the visual layout? How would we segment the data later on? What is important to my target audience? And this is where I came up with this little sketch here where I said I want to have on the top my control panels where I can choose the date, but also dig deeper into a campaign. Then we would have our most important metrics in the first row. And in these columns, we would have the acquisition, the actual costs and the conversions. So we get a quick overview on how that is doing. Then we'll go through and answer the most important questions, such as how is this stacking up to my ad budget, my targets that I have in place already, give some more context on the click versus cost per click price, the spend versus the revenue, where I also probably put in the whole return on investment metric. And then down below, we would have some more analysis in form of a table where the user can really dig into what campaign didn't do so well, what was the driver of the growth of my campaign or the decline, and which ad sets should I be looking into further. Remember, the real goal here was to give a quick overview for a Facebook ads manager on how the performance of the campaign is doing and maybe also give him some points in order to ask more questions, dig deeper into the data, go into the Facebook ads interface and optimize his campaigns. So I'd recommend for anybody to sketch out or wireframe your dashboard beforehand and get very clear about the visualizations that might make sense for your target audience to reach their goal. All right, so there you have it. These are really the essential preparational steps that you should go through to build an effective dashboard. Now, if you want to think through this by yourself for your client or the dashboard that you are building, we actually prepared a worksheet for you that you can download at measureschool.com slash dashboard plan. And there you can um, fill out this worksheet and really get clear on the message that you want to convey to your audience. And if you're ready to proceed, then head over to the next video right over there. And if you haven't yet, then consider subscribing down there because we're bringing you new videos every week. Now, my name is Julian. See you in the next lesson.